Hello, my name is Ram Kumar and I'm part of ST's product marketing team powering STM32 and STM8 series microcontrollers. Today, I take this opportunity to introduce you to world's most powerful MCU, the dual core STM32 product series. As you see in this matrix here on this slide, on X axis you can notice that we have introduced dual core MCU. This is part of STM32 H7 series of microcontrollers. The two cores in this product are Cortex M7 and Cortex M4. With the introduction of this dual core version, we're now bringing to market the world's most powerful MCU. This MCU embeds larger memories with ECC, various peripherals and security services, and delivering record performance in this dual core configuration of STM32 product line. We are now extending STM32H7 experience by adding dual core lines along with our existing single core lines. The dual core lines are intended to serve concurrent thread applications, while we have single core lines to serve the single thread applications. The essential message here is the single core lines have products addressing the entry and mid-range costs in the H7 family. The dual core line that are introduced now bring additional performance to address advanced applications and offering industrial grade options at 140C junction temperature, security services, hardware crypto, hardware accelerations, and MIPI DSI display interface for graphics line of products. As you see here, with STM32 H7 dual core product line, we reached record performance at a combined core mark number of 3,224 and per Current competitive analysis, this marks highest in the market space. We are able to achieve this due to the precision design and integration, including two Cortex-M class cores and multiple dedicated ST internal accelerators. As you notice here, the MCU includes two cores. The first one being ARM Cortex-M7 running up to 480 MHz with double precision FPU and MPU advanced DSP, and L1 caches. The second core being an ARM Cortex-M4 running up to 240 MHz, which is a best-in-class core for the real time, with single precision FPU, DSP, MPU, and SC's ART accelerator. So, what makes this MCU get such high performance? What is the support architecture? Are there any accelerators in addition to powerful Cortex M7 and M4 cores? For a quick answer to these kind of questions, as you see here, we have accelerators for many subsections. For graphics, the product embeds the Chromat accelerator and also an MJPEG codec in hardware. These two IP can offload much of the CPU by more than 90%. Secondly, this product embeds a DMA. This main DMA takes care of the most complex schemes to transfer between memories and the peripherals with up to 16 channels to offload the CPU. Next, we have embedded various hardware cryptos in this product. The dedicated cryptography and the hashing hardware acceleration offload the CPU by more than 90%. Finally, for Industrial motor control applications, we have embedded high resolution timers that can reach down to 2.1 nanoseconds. This timer can generate complex waveforms synchronized on multiple events with no CPU assist. Now, the obvious question is, where do I use this powerful dual core STM32H7? In fact, we believe that there are many target applications for dual core STM32H7 series in industrial, medical, and consumer market segments. As you see here, in industrial segment, this MCU could be used in human machine interface applications, inverters, gateways, and many more. In the consumer segment, we can target advanced IoT edge gateway applications access control applications, 
audio input and the ASR or keyword applications. In medical electronics, we see this as a fit for health and wellness monitors, respiratory applications and measurements and data logger applications. Now we will take a look at detailed use cases, performance and few smart architectures for you to innovate. Here are two examples, or I would say two real world use cases. On the left, you see a typical industrial tool machine. For this, from dual core STM32 H7 architecture, the Cortex M7 can handle all real time actions for human machine interface needs, and the Cortex M4 can handle all communication gateway needs or motor control needs, or we could run a pre trained neural network for sensor free processing and predictions. Moving to another scenario, on the right, you see an example for a home automation and security application. Here, the Cortex M7 can handle a pre-trained AI neural network for either pattern recognition or automatic speech recognition. And the Cortex M4 for real-time interfaces or it can handle communication protocol stacks or to connect to any proprietary IoT servers or AWS or Azure. Here is an example block diagram for the first use case mentioned in the last slide. This is showing a typical human machine interface application. This use case, for example, could be used for preventative maintenance of industrial motors. In this design, the Cortex M7 core could handle audio decoding, output, and also feed the display while the second core the Cortex M4 runs real-time control tasks, such as, for example, understanding the speed, torque, and vibration of the motor for preventative maintenance. Here is another use case. This is a representative block diagram that represents a typical use case to build complex applications that is combining both AI and real-time control for a product and consumer market segment. This example shows connected kitchen aid with advanced HMI with larger displays and voice recognition capabilities. In this use case, the Cortex M7 is doing voice recognition, running the display, working with internal and external memories, while also running a pre-trained neural network for voice recognition. The Cortex M4, using a built-in high resolution timer, is performing the motor control operations. And while doing this, it is also doing a secure communications to the cloud. Now, let's look at an example that ran on an STM32 H747 dual core processor. In this slide, you are seeing a real performance measures of a real world demonstration using an STM32 H7 dual core processor that performed food recognition based on a pre-trained neural network. In this example, the STM32Cube.ai tool was used to generate the code from a pre-trained neural network to run on our dual core processor. As you can see, the memory footprint that is generated by this tool was approximately 191 kilobytes of flash and 205 kilobytes for RAM. In this demonstration, we used a camera input in the continuous or in one shot mode, and it uses a built in floating point unit and it covered almost 18 foot classes. The neural network is based off of a fast downsampling mobile net topology from public paper applied to food and the data set. And if you look at the performances, on the STM32 H747, it has done one inference per image, and it used a mixed model fixed floating point unit. It consumed 6.2 megahertz with 150 milliseconds per inference, and the accuracy came up to 78.8%. To reinforce security in customer solutions, we have introduced new set of security services on the STM32 H7 product line. Certain dual core and single core variants of SCM 32H7 series are enabled with this feature. With this enablement, it is now possible for the customer to perform secure first install of their code in an unsecure environment 
or they can do another feature called a secure module install and then they can use a reference code from xcube sbsfu to write secure boot and secure firmware upgrade solutions on their target hardware most of these functions use embedded hardware crypto cores for cryptography and hashing hardware assist functionality let's look at the top 5 key features of scm 32h7 dual core the first key feature is its record performance delivering over 2424 core mark on m7 and another 800 core mark on m4 in our dual core configuration of h7 product line the second key feature is its embedded larger internal ram up to 1 megabyte with ecc and 2 megabytes of flash with ecc and these are enabled to serve complex applications that needed larger internal memory apart from these memories this product carries multiple 16-bit ADC peripherals, rich display connectivity and analog peripherals, and to serve broad spectrum of use cases. The third key feature is that we have embedded crypto and has developed overall ecosystem to support secure services, such as secure firmware install or secure module install, and to enable the processors to boot in the secure mode and to establish root of trust all the way from initial boot to the application space. The fourth key feature is its power efficiency. The dual core processors run in multiple power domains to give the user utmost flexibility to turn on or off a particular domain based on a use case to achieve lowest power consumption level. In addition, we have embedded both DC-DC and LDVO modes inside the product to get the best of both regulation modes of overall product. Looking at the numbers, we were able to achieve 350 micrograms per megahertz in the run mode, 200 micrograms per megahertz in the SMPS mode, and 4 microamps in the standby mode. The fifth feature is the great investment part of the STM32H7 series microcontrollers. This Processors are compatible with its predecessors, and we extend the 10-year longevity program on this family of processors. To cater to broad application segments, we have tailored H7 product line for market needs. So we are now enhancing H7 series with two new additional lines, broadly targeting industrial market segment and the graphics market segment. As you see here, the dual core STM32 H7 product lines are evolution from its single core line of H7 and F7 family products. Continuing on top of the single core and value lines announced earlier, we now introduced two dual core STM32 H7 product lines shown on top two rows. The first row shows the STM32 H747 series microcontrollers that includes both M7 and M4 cores. Just up to one megabyte of RAM with ECC, two megabytes of flash dual bank with ECC, along with internal MIPI DSI interface in alignment to the dual core display line of products. The second row shows the STM32H745 series microcontrollers and are targeted for dual core industrial line of products. These also embed one megabyte of RAM with ECC. 2 megabytes of flash dual bank with ECC, and this line of products do not have the MIPI DSI IP. In this line, we will have optional part numbers to serve 128 degrees C. The M7 core frequency can go up to 480 megahertz, and the M4 core frequency can go up to 240 megahertz. The internal 1 megabyte of RAM of these line described here comprises of 128 kilobytes of DTSM, 64 kilobytes for instruction trace code memory, and another 512K plus 288K of SRAM, 64 kilobytes of backup 1 RAM, and 4K of backup 2 RAM sections. Both ITCM and DTCM RAMs are zero weight state memories, and either can be accessed from either of the CPU or DMA. These could be useful for real critical code and real-time data 
such as interrupt service routines or stack heap memory. Now let's look at individual product line details of STM32H7 GL core lineup. Here is a block diagram of STM32H757-H747 dual core graphics line on the left hand side. On the right hand side you see a graph listing product variants in various pin, package and size options. On the block diagram, you see a dual core H7 product version for advanced graphics, which is embedded with a MIPI DSI interface. The dual cores used in this product line are Cortex M7 and Cortex M4. And it also embedded 1 megabyte of RAM with ECC and 2 megabytes of dual bank flash with ECC. In addition to this, apart from over 35 peripherals, this product houses new generation of uh, peripherals including fast 16-bit ADC going up to 3.6 million samples per second and up to 5 million samples per second in 12-bit mode. And we have two comparators, two op amps and two FD cans. And we also have a high resolution timer going down to 2.1 nanoseconds and several low power timers. This product embeds an LDO and also an SMPS for optimized current consumption. Optional crypto variants offering the security services such as SFI and SMI and the secure boot, secure firmware upgrades support are, all, are also available on this product line. Since this product line is intended for a consumer grade graphics application, this product line comes only in consumer grade temperature range between minus 40 to 85 degrees centigrade. Here is a block diagram of stm 32 h 755 h 745 dual core industrial line on the left hand side. On the right hand side you see a graph listing product variants in various pin, package and size options. The block diagram shows product features of dual core H7 product for industrial line and as you can understand this line does not include a MIPI DSI interface. The dual cores used in this product line are Cortex M7 and Cortex M4 and embedded with 1 megabyte of RAM with ECC and 2 megabytes of dual bank flash with ECC. In addition to these, apart from over 35 peripherals, this product houses new generation of peripherals including 16-bit ADC up to 3.6 million of samples per second and they go up to 5 million samples per second in the 12-bit mode. It has two comparators, two op amps, two FD cans, high resolution timer going down to 2.1 nanoseconds and we also have several low power timers. This product line carries an LDO and also integrated an SMPS for optimized current consumption. As you see in the block diagram, there are few optional blocks. These mean that there are few part variants covering crypto hash coprocessor offering support for security services such as secure firmware install and secure module install and covering secure boot and secure firmware upgrade options. In same manner, we'll have few variants to offer support for extended temperature range as this product line is targeted for industrial line of products. As you see here, all internal hardware of STM32H7 are blocked to operate as three physical independent subsections or power domains. This means that each of the block is independent enough to sustain itself in various low power or run states. So this feature in design will allow to shut down the unused domains to minimize current consumption. Apart from this, the part brings in power efficiency due to 40 nanometer process and we have dynamic voltage scaling and also because of the SMPS inside in the MCU. Finally, there is a batch acquisition mode domain for applications with always on task. And this domain 
includes a VBAT subdomain with RTC and a backup RAM to retain critical information. Here you can see a power consumption numbers in various power states of dual core STM32 H7 clusters. As you see here, the product can stay in standby with 4 kilobytes of RAM retention for as low as 3.6 microamps current. It consumes 145 microamps per megahertz when in run mode when both cores are running at 400 and 200 megahertz respectively when the peripherals are off. Also in this product, we have embedded an SMPS to help provide lower power consumption than a conventional voltage regulator such as, such as an LDO. With this, we see 60% of the dynamic power when compared to an STM32H7 in a single core mode. The other way to manage power is to decrease dynamic power consumption by slowing down the system clock even in run mode and individually clock gating the peripherals that are not used. Now, let's do a recap at individual product line details of STM32H7 single core lineup. Here is a single core entry level product line, the STM32H742 series. You see on the right hand side a graph with various pin, size and package options. On the left hand side you see the block diagram of STM32H742 single core entry level product line. This has Cortex M7 that can run now up to 480 MHz. It embeds 2 MB of dual bank flash memory and a RAM of 692 kilobytes. And this series of products has easy migration from an F7 and F4 series due to the pin for pin compatibility on certain common packages. Here is a single core general purpose product line, the STM32 H753, H743 series. These are in production for over a year now and these have optional crypto variant offerings with security services such as secure firmware install, secure model install, and secure board secure firmware upgrade procedures. On the right hand side, you see a graph with various pin size package options. This series has both one megabyte and two megabyte flash version. This product line comes with one megabyte of internal RAM and has easy migration paths from the F7 and F4 series due to the pin for pin compatibility and common packages. This product line now can run up to 480 MHz on the Cortex M7 processors here. Here is a single core STM32 H750 value line products. On the right hand side you see a graph containing the pin package and size options. On the left hand side, you see a block diagram of STM32H750. It embeds a Cortex M7 processor that can run up to 480 MHz, and then it has 128 kilobytes of flash memory, and then it has 1 megabyte of RAM. This product line comes at the lowest price point in the entire STM32H7 series, and then all the variants of this value line has a crypto built into them. Now let's look at security services on stm 2 h 7 platform. Embedded IP protection is gaining higher importance in all product designs. More and more companies are requesting how do we secure the code going into the microcontrollers and how do we securely upgrade the firmware or how do we manage the keys. To answer these and many other confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity related requirements in market space, we are now offering hardware and HSM enabled security services such as SFI and SBSFQ services on STM32 microcontroller product line. Security services on STM32 H7 product line uses hardware crypto and RSS, which is called as root security services. The SFI and the SBSFU security services are available for commercial part numbers such as STM32H750, STM32H753, STM32H755 and STM32H757. 
So, what is SFI? The acronym expands to Secure Firmware Install. As the name suggests, this is a service or a process that customers can implement this at their manufacturing lines or work with a known contract manufacturer that is trained on this concept. Essentially, the idea here is to enable a process for customers to load their code securely in an unsecure environment for the very first install of the code on the MCU. This process includes a reference code and tool chains to enable customer to develop secure loader that provides confidentiality and authenticity. The STM32H7 variants will come with ST provision device certificate and a hardware crypto to support the cryptography such as AES and ECC, etc. The flowchart here shows the SFI process. On the left, you see customer premises. On the right, you see a presumptive CM or the so called untrusted programming house for better understanding here. The customer purchases a HSM, which is a hardware security module from ST and then the customer stores the encryption key into HSM and then the customer encrypts the firmware with their firmware key. The customer will then send the encrypted firmware to the programming house. Then customer after storing the keys need to send the physical HSM to the untrusted programming house. For customer purchase, ST ships the SFI enabled STM32H7 to a programming house or the CM where the secure loader is loaded securely using all the information from the HSM and the various keys. In the previous slide, we discussed about HSM which expands to hardware security module. The hardware security module looks like a credit card and it has got a built in secure element. Customer can order these HSMs directly from the ST website and the part numbering starts with the STM32 HSM. According to the process defined in the previous slide, the customer purchases the HSM from ST and after receiving these cards, they program the HSM with their keys at their secure facility. The customer can program the HSM with the firmware key, the use count limit and Finally, the firmware identifier. After programming the HSM, the customer physically transfers the secure module to the CM. Here in this slide, you can visually see the complete ST SFI toolchain options available. The ecosystem to enable these are in progress, and we are now set up with partner tool chain providers such as Secure ThingZ and Segur Flash Secure. Here is a slide about STM32 SBSFU strategy. ST now has Xcube SBSFU libraries on ST's website and these are provided as a reference code to demonstrate state of art usage of the STM32 security protection mechanisms. It is a starting point for OEMs to develop their own security boot and secure firmware up update applications as a function of their product security requirement levels. Depending on the hardware architecture of a particular STM32 product, we have now defined different features enabled such as the single entry point for code execution upon every boot, the second feature being the secret and immutable code. The next one is a secure hardware enclave. And the next one is locking out all debug and access ports. And then finally, the system monitoring aspect from STM32. Here, you will see a flow of how secure boot is performed and how the chain of trust is maintained across various layers. Essential idea of secure boot starts from very first point of execution. So, depending on internal security blocks available for each STM32 family, the initial boot code executed is made secret and immutable. After reset, the code verifies the platform integrity and will start secure boot from trusted immutable code locations. All components are authenticated and integrity is verified after each stage. 
The next stage code is executed only when the components are authenticated and verified by the previous stage. Essentially, at startup, each stage verifies the integrity and or authenticity of the next stage. Only if the check is OK, control is transferred to the other stage. Otherwise, the system is halted, thus maintaining the chain of trust. Here, you are seeing the flow of how a secure firmware update is performed, and it is shown in the basic three-step form. As a first step, we are encrypting the firmware image, and it is created, and it is stored in the server. Next step is the new firmware image is sent through an untrusted channel. As a third step, the server is authenticated. The new firmware image is then downloaded, checked, and installed on the target system. Now, let's look at readiness of ecosystem for the STM32H7 dual-core product line. To support dual-core architecture of STM32H7, we have enhanced STM32CubeMX tools for dual-core for code generation and pinout mapping. As you see in the middle of the block, all IDEs for compile and debug support STM32H7 multi-core architecture from IAR, Kyle, along with free IDE based on Eclipse. Multi-core debugging on dual-core stm 32 7 architectures are already published by IAR and Autos community. In addition, we have our stm 32 q programmer supporting the dual-core solution as well. Here in this slide, as you see, we have different flavors of hardware solutions to speed up evaluation, prototyping, and design needs. The first one is the full feature evaluation boards. The second one is our flexible prototyping and demo boards, commonly known as discovery boards. Finally, we have very low cost, quick prototyping demo boards, commonly known as nuclear boards. The cheapest board to start evaluation is $27 for a nuclear board. Then at $87, we have a discovery board with built-in display. All of these boards are supported by STM32 ecosystems, supported by many IDEs and partners. Now let's look at software, tools, and services. As you see here, there are multiple partners enabled now. And we always encourage many other through ST's partner program. So far, we have enabled broad ecosystem to support development. And we have a large selection of partners are already engaged for embedded software, the software tools, graphics UI, security, training, and services. Here are four key takeaway points for the dual-core STM32H7 series microcontrollers. The first key takeaway is clearly the new record performance, standing at 2,424 core mark on the Cortex-M7, 800 core mark on the Cortex-M4. The second key takeaway is its flexible architecture, which is making it suitable for applications in industrial, security, or AI space. As a third takeaway, we have included advanced security features because of the crypto hash accelerators embedded in the processors and also enablement of security services on Cortex-M7. As a fourth key takeaway is the rich ecosystem of the SCM32 product line. This speeds up the customer designs, and also reduces the time to market. And, and it is a great investment with a commitment of 10 years longevity program of the STM32. Thanks very much for your attention. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact your local ST sales representative or log on to www.st.com forward slash stm32h7 for more product information. Thank you.